Okay, hello everyone. This is Bill Acevedo and team at Dorado Software. We are excited to kick off a new series to provide more information on OMNM and we do welcome your feedback. Today we will start with a simple topic on how to install the OMNM uh, virtual machine. The video will be about 10 to 15 minutes and uh, we will follow up with a Q&A session afterwards. If you have questions or comments, uh, please enter them into the GoToChat window and we'll try to address as many as we can. Okay, let's get started here. Um, for anyone not aware, OMNM is available as a single downloadable VMware compatible .ova file. And there are a couple of areas where we get the most questions about the VM. Number one, general questions or issues about installation and sizing. And then number two, how do I get the file server to work? The first thing I want to point out is that there is a, a VM install guide that is available that covers these questions. Key points to know about the user guide. Um, it covers the installation and sizing requirements um, in quite a bit of detail. Uh, generally the VM sizing is built for trial and uh, typically the VM will consume 10 gigs of RAM, 40 gigs of hard drive, and about four CPUs or four cores. So be aware of that as, you, as these are added to a um, ESX or a VMware workstation that it has the capacity to handle that those resources. Uh, the, the guide also provides the initial login credentials that allow you to uh, get into the setup menu. And finally, it, it also has the FTP credentials um, information uh, um, that will allow you to set up an FTP server. Regarding the earlier question about FTP server, um, the Linux system does not support an internal uh, file server like the Windows box does. Um, so you have to uh, uh, configure the external server, and the external server is already on the VM and created. All you need to do is provide the IP address that you've set for the uh, VM and provide the credentials and you're ready to go. One other note on the uh, install guide, there is a virtual appliance quick start section. You'll notice at the bottom here, it scrolls on to the next page. There's, there's basically five steps we're going to cover in today's demo. We're, gonna, uh, we're not going to import the OVA file for time purposes. I've already imported the OVA file and I've already powered on the VM. I will show you how to do that, but we're not going to actually do the download. Uh, we're going to start the VM, log in with the credentials. And then number three, we're going to run the dot .set setup uh, uh, program. And it's going to introduce a menu that's going to allow us to, to finalize the configuration. At that point, you're pretty much going to be done, but uh, there's a few additional steps that we'll do afterwards. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll show you the, um, the menu options to checking the server status and some other options. And then finally we'll connect to the, uh, um, to the system. Okay. So again, there's a couple of uh, platforms that support the VM. One is ESX and the other is, work, is work, uh, VM Workstation. I'm not going to show VM Workstation here. This is an EXX server. Um, generally to uh, um, install a new VM, you're going to do what's called a uh, deploy the OVF template. And you'll simply be provided with a dialog of where to go get the file. And once that's uh, selected, you just say import and it will import the appropriate file and create the VM. Windows Workstation is similar in that instead of doing a deploy OVF template, you will just do a file open, select the file, and uh, import it that way. So I've already got my VM here, as I mentioned, it's powered on, and as soon as you bring it up, you're going to get this login screen, and the credentials, as I mentioned, are in the document, but we're going to log in to Synergy is the password for the login. I can get focus on this screen here. The password is Synergy, capital P, at sign, dollar, dollar, and you're immediately presented with this menu, and the first section here is essentially telling you to run dot slash setup. The second section is if you've already set that up, some steps that you need to take next. So we're going to do dot slash setup. And welcome to the virtual appliance configuration menu. Select number one to configure the VM for initial setup. Just I'll take a brief moment to cover the other options here so you're aware of them. Number two and three are for reconfiguring the application server or web server memory. In case you decide to use this beyond the trial version, you would want, may want to increase the memory on either one of those to accommodate your, uh, your system. Number four is a configuration review. This is a bit of a troubleshooting section. 
that will show you uh, different things about the system and how it's set up and do some checks and uh, it might be a good uh, a thing to run through before you uh, contact support. Number five is to check server status. This is, this is equivalent to the green icon you have on the Windows install uh, where you can see the uh, web server and the application server up or down. Um, um, or I'm sorry, this will, this will actually just tell you when, is, when everything is ready. Number, five, number six and seven will allow, actually allow you to stop and restart both of those. So together, those, those compromise what, uh, uh, essentially what is the icons that you see on the Windows box for the app server and web server. And then number eight is if you do move this VM to another box, you may want to reset the application IP. You would use number eight to do that. And then 10 is just a way to restart the network service if you happen to change the NIC parameters on your box. So I'm going to jump into number one. And you need num lock on. Uh, the first option here is uh, we're initializing the system. It should take less than a minute. All the servers will be stopped. I'm going to press enter. So recall that the OMNM is already installed on this machine. And so it was installed with an expired license, so it will not start. But the servers are there, the database server, the web server, and the app server. So the initialization part is just simply shutting everything down so that we can uh, reinitialize it for this environment. Okay, that's done. Um, in the next screen, you will configure the static network IP. Before proceeding, you should have a valid network values for your IP address, mask, and gateway. Press enter. In this screen, what we're presenting you with is the Linux equivalent of what your nickname is. And this VM was created to work with Ethernet 0. And so what we need to type here is the exact Ethernet 0. It's not Ethernet 0. Um, the exact way it's written here um, and just press enter and then we need to add, enter our IP address that we've been given and the mask and the gateway IP and now here's the check asking you is this correct and you just take a double look at it make sure it is correct and then we're going to press Y. We're outputting some information to a log in that step. Um, here is a review of the actual file that gets updated to, to, um, to configure this Ethernet interface. And so we want to look at that again. And it looks good. I'm going to press Enter. So it's going to shut down the network interfaces and then bring them back up. One thing to note here, if you do erroneously put in an IP here, and continue, the common error you might see is that um, the license will fail to install. That is because the, the database is not up in, in order to let you install the license. Okay, now we're installing the license. Again, this is the trial license. Looks good. All right, and so the final step here is it's saying uh, you'll need to restart the VM, and um, once it's back up, you can, uh, you can query for it. It's gonna take three to five minutes, and then the URL is actually laid out there for the new IP that you've just entered to tell you what you need to go to to connect. So normally what we would do is restart the VM, everything would come back up. That's gonna take a bit of time. I wanna save a little bit of time here. I'm gonna go over to a, um, a system that's already up. And so let's just pretend here for a minute that uh, we've already uh, rebooted, our servers come back up, we powered the VM on. Again, we get the screen here to log in. Um, so then what we want to do here is we still want to go back into dot setup. You could come back in 15, 20 minutes and then see if the app server will, or the web server will connect. But uh, we want, I want to show you in the option number five here that I mentioned earlier. 
It will, it will normally scroll through and check all of the servers, the application server, the web server, and the database server to see if they're up yet. And by pressing number five, at some point, after every 10 seconds, it'll detect that it is up and you will see this screen indicating that everything is up and ready to go. So essentially you're done. Uh, the application is up and so let's just go to a box here. There's one final step I did want to show and that is the file server. Um, there's been some questions about the file server and how it works and why the internal doesn't work. There's a couple places to go and configure the file server. You could go to the common setup task here and click edit and, and create one. Um, probably the preferred way, a little more flexible, is to go into file management into the file server menu here. Again, I've already created these just for the, to save time here, but key things to note here is do not select the internal. Um, you must select the external and create a new one. And so I've created new ones here. The way to do that is you just hit right click and hit new and it will create a new one. You'll see the same dialog. I'm going to edit this one to show you what needs to be entered here. Um, I gave it a, a name of Linux SCP. That's because I chose the secure FTP option. The internal server with this uh, Linux VM will support FTP and TFTP if you want. That would need to be created as a separate server. Um, when you select secure FTP, it doesn't allow the other unsecure protocols. But essentially all you need here is the IP address that you've just provided for your VM, the login, name FTP user and then the password FTP user and it's PASS and it's actually that's actually on that VM document at the very bottom. So essentially that's it. Um, you're now up and running, your file servers work and uh, you can go about discovering your devices. So that that wraps up essentially the demo here on the VM installation and I guess at this point we will open it up for questions. And it doesn't have to be necessary in the VM if you have other questions not on what we just demoed, um, that's fine too. Um, we're also interested in any topics you might want to see in future uh, uh, sessions. Let me uh, look at my chat window here to see if I've got any questions. Now we've got some pretty good attendance. Uh, does anybody have any questions at all on this? Okay. If there are no questions, and uh, just feel free to, oh, there's one. Um, okay, so uh, some people want to know how to set their, uh, how to set their, uh, uh, their settings once they've got the VM up. So this is a little bit specific to, uh, to ESX server itself. Uh, VMware Workstation is going to be a little bit different, but you do have the option of going to your VM. And on mine, it's just edit settings. And of course, you would need to power down your VM first to do to apply these settings. But I just want to show you that uh, you could go into your memory settings, and you could set your memory over here to more memory. Um, again, you need to make sure that your underlying hardware can support this, but um, you can do that. Same with the CPUs. CPUs are a little bit tricky um, um, because they create virtual CPUs for VMs, and uh, you do need to make sure also that you have the cap capability uh, based on the number of sockets you have and the number of cores per socket. Um, which also means translates roughly into CPUs that you can support this uh, configuration or any expansion of that configuration. Same with the hard disk. Again, there's 40 gigs allocated, again, just for trial. If you're going to use this in production, you're going to want to up the, uh, the size here, depending on how much data retention you have on events or TFA or anything of that nature, how many files you're backing up, and uh, um, you just want to keep that in mind. So it's fully, it's fully changeable um, if you like. Just be aware of the underlying sizing considerations. And the sizing considerations are also outlined in the uh, user guide for OMNM for different levels of usage. And they're, they're general, they're general ball, ballpark type uh, recommendations. Okay, looking through my questions here, I see some people were asking about the FTP server. And as I mentioned, that was a common question about um, how to configure that, why the internal does not work. I didn't really say why it doesn't work, but uh, essentially on the Windows box, um, um, it's basically a purpose-built FTP server um, that only works on Windows, and there's big disadvantages to the internal file server anyway. For one, you can't log into it. It's, uh, it basically cycles passwords every time there's a session, and so it, there's restrictions with it, and it, it really does not work great with high volumes of data. So in most circumstances, we do recommend an external server anyway. 
but just as I mentioned, it's ready to go on the VM. Okay, any other questions on that? Okay, there was a question on the, uh, on the user guide. Someone's asking where exactly is that information on the, on the uh, passwords. So essentially there's a section here that says ready, applications ready to use, what next? That means after you're all up and, and the, and the uh, TP servers or the uh, app server and the web server are up, you can go and uh, do some additional tasks. One of those is setting up the FTP server. Here's the information on the FTP server and uh, the, the password and the login can be found right here in this table. Someone else is asking here about um, compatibility. Let me just see if I can page up here. So the VM was created um, on, a, on a VMware workstation server and some of the compatibility that we, um, that we publish here is based on what VMware says it supports when you export it this way. So there's a quite a few, few different options here of systems that you can uh, try to, to use other than just workstation or ESX. Um, I, these have not been tested but they're here for your information in case you needed to try it. Okay, anybody else have other questions? Again, it doesn't have to be about the VM. If you have suggestions for other topics, or uh, that would be fine too. Okay, I'm just scrolling through the document here, see if there's anything here that uh, might be of note here. I think we covered everything. Um, I don't have anything else for this meeting. If there's no questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this uh, session up.